All right, guys. So like I promised, here's part two of our little series of life-saving skills and techniques for you to put in your backpack, tote around with you that are not firearms related or cool guy related. Um, like I said in the last video, we're gonna be talking about my little buddy throw bag or um, uh, an IFAC that you can throw to somebody in the event that they need medical gear and it doesn't take away from, from you doing what you need to do. So to start out with, we'll talk about this little bag. Um, this is like a, like an, in, well, first of all, let's start out with the fact that I'm not a doctor and this shouldn't suffice for proper medical training. Um, let's get that out of the way. But this bag, it's like an insert for um, a big medic bag, right? Usually whenever you get a big medic bag, it'll come with three, four, five of these, depending on which brand you get or which brand you go with. And, you know, one of these would be like a stop the bleed kit. Another one would be for airway, so on and so on. Um, you can find these online. You don't have to buy the big kit to get these. You can find these specifically online. Um, but, but I got lucky and found mine in an army surplus store. Um, I found two of them. I got one in my truck and one in my wife's truck. Uh, where I keep this, it's got the same contents as my personal IFAC, but my personal IFAC is on my kit. I'm not wearing my kit around everywhere, nor do I keep my kit in my vehicle. Uh, so this stays in my truck and I keep mine in the driver's side door of my truck. My big medic bag stays in the back of my truck and I'm obviously not toting that around with me everywhere either. Uh, so if I have to go back to the truck to get my big bag, then I'm grabbing this also. It kind of serves multiple purposes. Um, yes, I built it out so that I could toss it to somebody in the event that they needed some gear. Uh, but it also serves as a, as a personal IFAC for me inside of my truck. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm driving down the road or whatever. Um, yes, I do keep a small amount of gear on my person. Uh, you know, I might have a tourniquet with me or, or, or so, but in everyday life, I'm not toting this around with me. Um, so I'll open it up to where you guys can see the contents as I open it. The scissors fell out. This is how it will be stored um, as you open it. So first things first, I got a pair of trauma shears. These aren't full size. I like these, these are like four and a half or five inches, I can't remember, but I like these because they're not full size, but they do the same thing. They're made out of the same material and they're just as strong, but they don't take up as much room. I have the same size on my kit. Um, I just like these. I, I do have some full size ones, but. So next, in the back, like we covered in the last video, I have a tourniquet. Um, so, Another thing that I want to mention is that in this video specifically, I'm not going to be talking about the use of any of these items or, or how to use them. That's a completely separate class in itself, and uh, it's not necessarily one that I want to do on a video. Uh, it, that's, a, that's a lengthy class. Uh, we're just going to cover the contents. We're just going to talk about what's in the bag, uh, what... and, and just to help you get an idea of what you should put in your personal life act. Uh, or if you wanted to build a kit out like this to, uh, you know, give to somebody else. Uh, so next, we have a four inch pressure dressing. Um, and it, four inch is really bandage. This is to stop the bleeding. This is what you would use before you went through your tourniquet. Uh, it's, it's in the name pressure dressing. Um, next, uh, another four inch pressure pad. Um, this is, this is what you would use like a cravat. Um, same thing as a tourniquet, different method, but 
it's a it's a pressure dressing just a different kind so i keep everything in a ziploc bag for a couple of reasons one it keeps everything compact and nice and clean and when i open the bag things aren't just flying out everywhere and it also helps with the sterility uh, it helps keep everything clean and sterile <clears throat> I say that and then I open the bag and start going into it. Uh, so next we got a set of chest seals, um, occlusive dressings, otherwise known as chest seals. Um, again, the, the use is in the name, it's a chest seal. It, if you haven't, this is a twin pack. Um, so this would be for an entry and an exit wound. Let's say you have a gunshot wound to the torso, a through and through, you would seal off the front and seal off the back, and it basically stops air from entering the cavity and prevents a tension pneumothorax. And like I said, I'm not gonna get too in depth on the use of these things. So next, we got a roll of Curlex, uh, four and a half inch by four yards, basically. Um, this is for stuffing a, a wound and helping to stop bleeding. This stuff comes in handy. We got a six inch Israeli bandage pressure dressing. Same thing as a four inch, it's just a little bit bigger. We got some compressed gauze from North American Rescue. This stuff is cool because it's compressed really, really, really tight. It's Z folded. It doesn't take up a lot of room at all. And uh, it goes a long way. Whenever you pull this out, it's Z folded. So you can hold it in one hand and stuff a wound with the other hand. And it, it really goes a long way. Um, this is 4.5 yards. All right, next, got an ace wrap. Um, this would be for, you know, after you get your pressure dressing on or, uh, yeah, basically after you get your pressure dressing on, you know, you can wrap it up with this ace wrap and help keep everything all together without having to worry about it coming undone. Um, all right, got a nasal pharyngeal with some lube. This is a size 28. This is gonna be your average size for your, your average adult male. Um, in this kit, that's what I keep. I have some smaller ones, have some bigger ones in other places, but in this kit, I just try to save on room and uh, I keep a 28 in there. I got a marker. That's to mark your date and time on your tourniquet. Um, this is like a, uh, I got this from Lowe's, I think. But it's like an all-weather marker. Um, doesn't matter if it's wet or muddy, it's going to write. I just like that in this kit better than a Sharpie. Just something to think about. <clears throat> um, a Needle D, Needle D compression kit. This is for a tension pneumothorax, average size, 14 gauge, 3.25 inches long. Um, completely different class to get into, but something that you should have in your IFAC. If you don't know how to use it, it's okay. Uh, you should have it anyways, I think. You know, maybe there's someone there that does know how to use it. Um, I, I don't think that it's a bad idea to have all the tools. Um, you know, maybe you can get trained on how to use it later on down the road, uh, or or maybe just by chance sake, there's someone there that knows how to use it. Um, but I think I would rather, if I didn't know how or whatever the case was, I think I would rather have it. So let's see, that's it. That's everything in this bag. Um, I'll keep the series going and 
uh, I'll come up with some more things to go over. Um, maybe we'll start, maybe we'll start going over some of these things individually. Um, I know that, I know I, I am going to do uh, a video on how to build a ghillie suit. I'm working on that, but I'm still, uh, I'm still sourcing some of the components that I want to get. I have some of them, but I don't have all of them. So that'll be, that'll be upcoming. And anyways, I hope this helps. I appreciate it. Thanks. Hey, one more thing I want to add real quick. Um, I have a lot of gear, right? Like so much that someone stole my air compressor off my trailer the other day while I was on a job. And all I could think was, man, thank God they didn't go in the back of my truck. Cause I had it unlocked like a retard, but luckily they didn't get my, uh, you know, anything out of the back of my truck. They just snatched my air compressor off the trailer real quick. Um, cause my big bag, I mean, I, I don't know exactly, but I would venture to say that's a couple thousand dollars worth of, worth of kit. Um, so what I'm trying to say is don't feel overwhelmed. I, I didn't get all that in one shot, right? Like I didn't save up thousands of dollars and then just buy a bunch of kit. Um, that's not how it goes. And I don't think you should either. So don't feel overwhelmed. Um, you know, every now and then you got a hundred dollars to spare or $50 to spare, or, you know, however much go to, uh, go to one of the websites I'm not going to try and plug anybody, but I, I usually use Chinook Medical. Um, you can go to NorthAmericanRescue.com. There's a couple of other ones. Just do a little Google search. But if you have some change to spare, pick up a couple of things at a time. Uh, and, you know, over time, the next thing you know, like me, you'll have mostly everything that you need. But uh, don't feel overwhelmed and think like, man, I, I, now I gotta go get this and that and this and that, and man, that's gonna cost an arm and a leg and da 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 da. And if you think like that, you'll never get anywhere. Um, the, the best way to do it is just piece by piece, little by little, and then the next thing you know, and it won't take long, the next thing you know, you'll have um, a, a good amount, a fair amount of the things that you need. And anyways, I just wanted to say that real quick. Um, I know some people might feel a little bit overwhelmed and that'll just stop them dead in their tracks. So, all right, thanks.